This is a boat for the ages. Really kind of interesting design. This is a really cool boat. Really pretty neat. Big plus on this boat. Multi points. Kind of a neat thing. Something else here that's really cool. We like that the best. Hey, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. I just wanted to take a second to let everyone know that we are going to be at the Annapolis Boat Show this October 14th, 15th, and 16th. We really enjoy getting out and meeting you and hearing your voices. So on the 14th, we're gonna be there from one to two at the YouTube booth. And then from three to four, we're gonna jump over to the Edson booth. So come say hi if you can, if either one of those work out for you. Uh, then Captain Q and I on Saturday are going to be sitting on a panel called Old Boats, New Owners. Um, that's gonna be at the Edson booth at, from two to 3.30 on Saturday, the 15th. And we're gonna have a, a bunch of specialists, someone who talk about fiberglass, someone to talk about rigging, we'll have a sailmaker. So come bring your questions, let's talk old boats and, and what it means to own them. In fact, I, uh, I can speak to it too as I've got my old boat right here. And then on the 16th, we are going to be just at the Edson booth from 10 to noon. So hope you can stop by and say hi, we'd love to meet you. Captain. Hey, Randy. Randy, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I like what I see here. Well, you know, I just stopped by this boat, and it looks like they're having a tag sale. What do you think? Oh, perfect. Is this a possibility? Uh, is, should we do this boat? This, no, we can't do this boat this week. You know why? There's only one tiny little mass on it. This is a, a, a brand new boat, we believe, built by Lyman Morse, and uh, it's modeled after, if not a redo of a old commuter uh, vessel which they used to go from Newport and all up and down Long Island Sound to, to Wall Street uh, back in the days when um, the train was a little dirty and crowded and uh, the highways were pretty unsettled, the Model Ts. I found a note on here about the, uh, the, the tag sale. It's $20? No, no, it says if you have to ask the price you can't afford it. Oh, uh, we should move on then. Follow me, pal, because I've got something that we can all afford. And this is a boat for the ages, uh, in a way. Uh, I, I might say that for the journeyman sailor, somebody that knows how to sail and wants to really do some blue water sailing. We got a lot of people asking about blue water boats. We have a boat today that came from England to our country and then numerous times cruised down to the islands with previous owners and now is uh, living happily in Maine and we're right here in the town of Harpswell. Now, what do you think about that? Ooh. That is a Nicholson 35 and uh, she was built in England in 1973. She was developed about the time that they were starting to move the rudder off of the back of the keel. And what this designer, whose name was uh, Raymond Wall, uh, who worked for uh, uh, Camper Nicholson's, uh, did was he just, he took the rudder and moved it aft and attached a skeg to the front of it and let a separation in between. One of the other unique things he did was uh, they put a, uh, a hydraulic drive in it, so it allowed them to position the propeller right behind the keel. So it's almost impossible to catch a lobster trap on the uh, on the on the propeller. Really kind of interesting design. But she is split. One of the reasons in England was they wanted to make certain that the keel was set far enough forward and flat enough so that when all the water left the estuaries this boat could lean up against the, the wharf and they could scrub the bottom down and take the barnacles off and repaint okay. it if necessary. So there's a practical aspect to this coming from England that we don't have an issue with so much in this country, if that makes sense. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a fun history to this boat in that the uh, builders and the and design offices of Camper Nicholson actually started back in about uh, 1748. Wow. Uh, making them probably one of the oldest ongoing marine boatyards in history. There might be some 
other one somewhere we don't know about, but they're over 200 years. She has a really pretty spoon bow coming down to her. You can tell that she's going to be one of our mushers, right? Yep. Nice spoon bow, a lot of reserve buoyancy to the bow, and she's not, not a lot of tumble home here. Pretty. What do you uh, mean reserve buoyancy? Well, it just means that the volume forward um, is just fuller so that when the boat settles down into the water, it's not gonna drop down. A lot of newer boats these days, uh, you'll see a very fine edge to the bow, and you know it's just gonna cut down into the water. That's fine in flat water, not a problem. You won't, you won't notice an issue with it all day long. But when you go offshore, uh, that those knife edge bows are gonna try and wanna throw the boat one way or the other. This, with the reserve buoyancy, will lift the boat up on the next wave and settle it down and keep you moving, like so. Yep. So, it's a design that, that works very well to give the boat as much um, comfort at sea as possible. She's got lovely lines, and what they've also done too, they've simplified maintenance on the boat. How much teak do you see? Just, There's a little tiny teak rail right yeah, along the top of the- Just the, the toe uh, rail, yeah. Right on top of the bulwark there. And that's mainly to catch your toe so it doesn't slip off when you're braced up against the bulwarks. Yep. Uh, and on this boat, they've oiled it and uh, kept the maintenance really simple. We Seems also right. have what we like here. What oh, is that? Oh, that's a gold cove stripe. Yes, our gold coast. We like this a lot. It's pretty and sharp with the blue. It does, doesn't it? It's really pretty and a nice white uh, boot top down there. Now, her draft is a little bit more than uh, a lot of people like. Yep. At about six foot... Uh, it might be six foot five inches, something like that, a little okay. bit over six feet. But she's designed to go in the North Sea, the English Channel, uh, and across the Atlantic, which that's how this boat got here. Didn't come on a freighter, she came on her own bottom. Ah. So that's kind of fun. Yep. And in the meantime, a previous owner sailed her multiple times to and fro, hither and yon, one might say. Oh. To, <laughs> where, where is yon? Somewhere around... <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put that in Google Maps, it didn't seem to... Yeah, I think, I think they better go, go, go beyond on the maps they can do. But it's somewhere down in the islands, in the Caribbean somewhere. If you notice on the transom, something sticking out of here. That is not a jet propulsion unit. Huh. Uh, okay. And it, it is not that thing we saw on the back of that poor Hallberg Rassi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a gymnasium. Uh, yeah. That terrible thing, uh, which hopefully by now has been removed. But uh, this is part of an Ares self-steering wind vane system. Oh, yeah. And I recently just read an article where a fellow put 30,000 miles on his and would have gone around the world a second time with it. It's just flawless, no problem with it whatsoever. I'm dying to go for a sail with a, a wind vane. I haven't done it yet. While we're back here, may I show you the radar? Sure. This is an interesting Furuno unit. It will uh, be used with a remote control gizmo. So it remotes down to the screen. You pull out your iPhone and the iPhone will show you the radar readout. You know, I'm a little slow, but I, I just noticed there's something on your face. No, the other face. This, oh, 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 I forgot. I was auditioning for a role in the community uh, uh, presentation of uh, 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 the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I got caught in the middle of makeup and to rush down and do the shoot with you. Anyway, yeah, well, thank you for pointing that out. It's uh, just a minor, minor issue. Uh, we think we'll survive. So uh, this is a really cool boat. This is, this is, there's going to be a lineup for this boat, I think, when we get finished. What do you think? Should we get on board? Yeah, let's go check it out. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people. And so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Okay, Randy. Hey. hey. Once again, you know, I, I love these split cockpits, and uh, this is really, uh, this is commodious. You know, what, do you, what do you mean split cockpit? Well, I mean, it's divided. In other words, we have the working crew and guests forward and out of my way at the wheel. Okay. I can run around back here. I can see forward. It has a autopilot uh, inner wheel here that hooks up to a Raymarine drive down like so, which is out of the boat right now. Um, very strong. Look at the look at the, the binnacle aspects to it. Look how how massive that is, and you know why that is split that way. Did you have a do you have an answer for that? Uh, no, I don't think we've seen a split. We haven't. We haven't. But that's, this is one thing they've done. I can pull this little piece up 
Look at that. You know what that is? Oh, that's your emergency rudder post. Yes, there's a very nice <coughs> Ritchie compass. I kind of like the blue face on it and the big numbers. Uh, this is a working man's boat, and as I said before, sort of a journeyman's boat. You know, yeah. somebody who's passed their apprenticeship who wants to really go sailing and go offshore. The size of cockpit, these are nice wide flat seats. Um, we have a bridge deck which is low and not too not too wide so you can get over it. We've got a couple of big lockers here. Want to take a look at these? Sure. Okay. Uh, whoa. Again, pretty deep. You see some of the engine uh, details down here. Here's an, uh, a remote oil filter. Okay. And below that, there's another oil canister with a big line going off of that big heavy duty uh, line. Can you see that down can, there? Yeah, it's a big boy. I'm going to guess that that goes to part of the hydraulic drive system. This little piece is wiggles out. There's your propane tank. Oh yeah. Now you got it. Uh, there's two two yeah. tanks in there. And uh, so you got two 10-gallon tanks, and that's that's a fair amount of propane for this boat. Yeah. And interestingly enough, do you smell anything? No. Uh, I smell just a little whiff of the gas myself. We have a very sensitive schnoz, but... You sure uh, that was the propane? I fart in your general direction! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't get into that. The gasketing here is working because I didn't smell that until I expose the tank yeah and so there's just a little bit of ambient uh, uh, gas floating around there but um, essence uh, we'll take a look at the other side now again we're in the winter storage mode and here we can see your favorite uh, ab worker so that, and then down below that if we took all this gear out of here you'd have a really large locker and you'd have enough room to get in there and to access the steering quadrant. Yeah, so I just stick my head down. So I'm looking here and I can see that that's, that looks like the bottom of the pedestal, right? Yep, that's what you're seeing. And then just behind that is the quadrant, which, yep. Yes, okay, All yep. Right. And then we've got the cables there, so. The cable looks pretty good in that particular picture. Yeah, although remember with my chat with Dave from Edson, Yes. Um, those cables are only good for about 10 years and okay. they, they rust from the inside out. You do have to run your cotton ball or your white glove over it to feel right. for, for any fray, but internally, if you don't keep your eye on those and replace them every 10 years, you could be in for something That's more. a pretty inexpensive change too, isn't it? Just a piece of cable. It's not yeah. like uh, you're buying the boat again. Exactly. Uh, and there's a pretty strong a uh, set of, of shivs on this. I understand they're six inch in diameter, which is a nice diameter. Yep. The bigger the diameter, the less uh, load uh, a single spot yep. needs. Carries on it, yeah. Less chance of failure. And you can see here on the quadrant that we do have those double nuts that are, so you've got a lock nut and then yep. an adjustment nut to adjust the tension of that cable. I see that. Um, on my boat, those nuts were installed incorrectly. There were one on either side of this. If you were buying this boat, you'd want to take a look at that quadrant because Two things can happen when you let go of the wheel, that that quadrant can slam over to one side and can actually damage the quadrant. If it doesn't have any stops. It doesn't have any stops. Even if it does have stops, that can be pretty bad. And then the other one is if you run aground. Uh, one thing, I'm not seeing a stop on here, and it's probably just relying on the end of the cable and the nut right here as being the, the stopping device, isn't it? You know, one other thing which David didn't mention, I might suggest when when you unload the, the chain, I would check the spin on the uh, shivs to make yep. certain that there are uh, no flat spots on the inner diameter of the shiv. That's right. Because that could lead to a failure there of the shiv or or not allow the uh, cable to run true. Yep. Yeah, you have those cheeks of the shiv that can get uh, and the cheeks worn as well. down if the cable is not lined up properly. So um, this is a pretty straightforward setup. One might imagine it's been working for about 50 years too, right? Yeah. So, yeah, probably right for a, a decent inspection, too. This is Cigarettes. nice because they've actually put a cover on it. Yeah. So even if it's raining or whatever, uh, whatever's in there is going to stay dry. And you can, just very handy. And this is pretty tidy. Uh, there's just things you're going you're gonna to need. There's a little extra compass to help you find your way home. Uh, just little bits of line. This does something special. I don't know what, but that new piece of nylon and that shackle, there's something you're going to use that for. Uh, so yeah, don't throw that out. Don't throw that out, and that is one word to, of wisdom to uh, to all of our our potential new boat buyers. When you buy a used boat, and you're going to find some odd little levers or bars or pieces of string or whatever that just 
don't make any sense. Until that time you go to lash down the the uh, anchor on the foredeck and you'll find, oh, a little piece of nylon with that shackle on it. That's just what I need. I've got one more locker for you while we're talking. And this is a small garage. You know, we like garages, don't we? We do. Okay. He's filled this. Don't we love to fill up our garages? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, comes with, with a species. Uh, I have a barbecue set here for you and tools and kit. There's a place down here, too, that you can see there's an extra plate which the owner described as another board that could be used to help access the back of the uh, uh, steering quadrant. So, Randy, let's go forward. What do you say? Oh, yeah, let's do that. Randy, one thing about the boat, when you look around, you see all the right names. The shrouds are using Norseman fittings. Uh, there's a Harkin roller furler for the Genoa. Lumar uh, windlass right here with a chain and a cat for, the, uh, for your nylon anchor lines and docking help. This is pretty simple though, isn't it? I'm sorry we didn't get you a bowsprit with this boat, yeah. but you just don't need one. They've, they've anchored it up. I think if you can get past me here a little bit and just take a look at how that's nestled into the bow. And it's a CQR that sort of mates itself perfectly, doesn't it? Uh, we've got um, a hatch here for you too. Uh, that's the end of round one. <laughs> An extra anchor. You could put a, uh, um, a good old Danforth in there, couldn't you? Yeah. It's the right shape for it. And it has a drain hole down there. Uh, to empty it right out the side. <laughs> Looks like a mini Dracula coffin to me. Uh, very newish Lumar hatches. Um, and by the way, as we look down here, this doesn't, isn't the grittiest uh, non-skid we've seen. It's adequate, it's a nice pale gray, so it works well with the, uh, yeah. the overall look of the boat, doesn't it? If you it? owned it, would you put down a little new uh, grip? N rule number one. Go sailing. Then see what I want to put down. Yeah. This, do you know what this is? What this is for? Um, me... I'm gonna guess it's for bringing a dinghy on board. Holy crap! Wow! I am really, <laughs> I'm really impressed with that. Yeah, when you hold your dinghy up and over, you don't want to get it caught and chafing on that wire. Well, that, and this is just gonna sm slide more smoothly. Yeah. This is a classic English Proctor spar, gold anodized, and uh, you know what they did with this too, which is kind of a nice thing. You won't hear this boat in a marina. You know why? It's foam filled. Oh, really? It's a Lumar 8. And there is a, another one down here for the, the uh, main halyard. We have a spinnaker track. Oh, yeah. There's our spinnaker pole lying on the deck. And I'm happy to say that we're finally seeing a full, real spinnaker pole. Not a whisker pole with holes in it and all that stuff. And you go sailing and you look beautiful out of the water. There are no derades, even though one of the earlier designs showed a couple of derade vents on here. Uh, there are two back, uh, just forward of the Dodger, uh, two little ones, but there were supposed to be a couple more forward. All right, Randy, underneath the, the mainsail here, we've got just a good old fashioned hang on the side boarding ladder. Something else here that's really cool. What do you see? I'm seeing this unusual little skinny line. Yeah, yeah. You know what those are for? I don't. It's a system called a Dutchman, and it's really neat. And what it does, they attach uh, these little lines to a little, a little hook, a little eye, on, sewn onto the sail at the foot of the sail, of the mainsail. Then they go up through different um, lines on each side of the sail, and they go inside and outside. They sort of wend their way in through the mainsail. And the reason it works is what you do, you haul the sail up, and it's all set and flying. Then when you drop the sail, you throw off the halyard and it drops just like a Roman shade. Exactly. Thing. Big plus on this boat. Multi points. Hey, I think we should go below. What do you say? Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. Ah, hey, Randy. Hey. Once again, I invite you below deck on, a, on our latest yacht here. Ooh. First of all, just take a quick pan around here for a minute. Just get a sense of the size 
of this 35 foot boat. You know, our pal Sea Dog here has had a lot of attention. At the Newport Boat Show, uh, the kind people at the bitter end uh, came and gave her their, a cop, their own leash. Oh, the Bitter End Yacht Club people, yeah. The Bitter, yes. And how, what do you think about that? That's pretty cool. So she likes wearing that. Yeah. But the, the sweetest thing, I think, out of the last two years we've been doing this, is a young lady came down with her father and she was about this tall and he was like way up to the sky, big guy. And she just stood there. She was beautifully, impeccably dressed and, and just stared at me. And, and her father said, all right, Hannah, um, go ahead and, and, and give Captain Q the, the thing there. And he kind of gave her a little nudge forward. And she came forward. She handed me this chunk of leather. Uh, can you read that? <laughs> yeah. She has emblazoned it with Sea Dog's name. Oh. So this is a leather leash from Hannah, but she's made the whole thing. She put the rivets in to make the handles and all that. That's all hand, her handwork. So Sea Dog likes this one. Has to admit, she likes this one the best. Yeah. Okay, so Hannah, thank you so much wherever you are, sweetheart. So sweet, so You're sweet. You're a great fan. Once again, uh, I find myself in a comfy corner here, and it's pretty comfy. Notice there's a pretty wide set T uh, sections here. The, uh, I'm gonna just set Sea Dog down for just a second here. Uh, right there. Uh, the joiner work and everything here is about as plain Jane as you can get, isn't it? Yep. Uh, but it's been varnished within, you know, the, probably the last 20 years or so. Uh, no fancy ceilings in there, but uh, you can see where the old paint that was put on there years ago has, has just dried up and, and there's nothing but cosmetic look. And likewise, top side, nice little shelf and access to your uh, chain plates. The uh, headroom in here, I know you've had problems on boats recently, Randy, <laughs> but I think you'll see how much room we have here, huh? Uh, op no opening ports in the cabin here, um, but lots of light here. I'm just going to scoot forward, and they've utilized what other people have done too, the forward end of the settee, which, by the way, can be made into a double. And this cushion behind me there will form the board and the support. Very simple, old school kind of circuit breaker panel here. Nice uh, EPIRB system. You have programmed that so it has information about your boat. It just didn't send out a thing saying beep, 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 I'm, I'm lost. It says beep, 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 uh, the good yacht sky is at lat launch and so forth. Yep. Uh, a must, anybody going offshore. Uh, should we take a look inside? Oh, yeah. Uh, so there we go. Oh. Now, this is a busy chart table, but I can find just what I need in it, can't I? So I, I'm going to give that a little extra, I think, at the end. What do you say? You can swing in and out of that, uh, that nav station pretty easily. Uh, bigger than average galley. We have your endless, ubiquitous uh. pot and pan storage. But also, interestingly enough, we have more pot and pan storage, quite convenient. Two burner propane stove, and oh my God, they're, they're trying to bake the stuff now. This does have a really nice big uh, refrigeration system in it, and I'm gonna slide this over. A little trick to this, you learn these little tricks on boats. If you wanna get into the whole thing, you slide that back like so, and there's your freezer compartment. They've got something to wash down that stuff with, don't they? But we do have a, a, a hand pump here. We have a heck of a nice big wet hanging locker, right? Oh yeah. Some and hanger, uh, hanger fowlies there. There's this cushion here. What's this cushion doing? Uh. Well, let me show you. I'm going to give you a little All little right. treat here. What you do when you're offshore and you've got your Aries wind vane going, right? You just squeeze into this cushion, and you sit here. And if you have, the Aries I think has a couple little lines you can make minute changes to, alter your course. You can sit right here, wedged into the seat. If you're solo sailing or other crew members sleeping, but you just don't want to be out in the cold and the wet. But you're wedged in here, comfortable as a bug in a rug. Kind of a neat thing. Huh. The other thing too is if you happen to be under power somewhere, yep. this cushion gets warmed up by the engine. Speaking of engines. yeah. Have we got one? Yeah, we have one here. And it's right here. Let me just, there's a little trick to this. We just have to slide this out because there's a switch on the bulkhead. But, ooh, there you go. Look at that. Oh, wow. Uh, looks like a nice new heat exchanger. Oh yeah, that's the blue, blue shiny yep. thing. Okay. 
There's actually about 3,700 hours on this. The muffler and the, and the piping on that looks like it's been handled recently. Now remember, this is you're looking at the back end of the engine right now. Yeah. <clears throat> because there's the pump right down there, the light blue piece. Oh yeah, that's right. Because that's your hydraulic no, pump. So there's no drive shaft. No. Well, there. Uh, there is a drive shaft, but it's not coming out of the engine. Block. Not coming straight out of the engine, right? Okay. You can get to that two more from the cockpit lockers. Okay, here are the hydraulic lines coming down for your hydraulic uh, drive, and you can see just below that. And I'll make open up this dustpan here. Look oh, yeah. at that. So there's your drive shaft. And what else is nice about that? Uh, you got your stuffing box right there. Right there. So if there's a, a drop coming out of that, you can take immediate action. Four size lower berth. And a nice big uh, pilot's berth up here, too. Uh, I would leap into that. I would fit into that because I can tell the width of it is really good. Nice little galley table here, and it has this little pop open right there. The spar is stepped on the keel down here. Look at that. Look how dry and clean those, those electrical fittings are. One of the next things we're coming to, and this is what I like the most on a lot of these European boats, is the head. It's so big. Normally this would be on a 40-foot or, or a 45-foot boat, wouldn't it? They have this much room to swing the, the cat around, you know? Yep. Uh, they've put a, a tilted mirror in here and flat storage inside, but that way you don't have to bend over to shave. Hot and cold pressure water with a shower uh, attachment to it. It has a Levac uh, head. Uh, this works on a, on a pump system, and, and when you pump it out, when you pump the handle, it pulls the material out of the thing, but also acts as a suction to draw water in to fill the bowl. So, uh, once again, we're, we're going the wrong way here, aren't we? Yeah. That's okay. But one thing I do like, look at this bubby. You could do handstands on that. Uh, again, they've put in sliding doors here. And I'm going up to the forward cabin, and uh, we've got a fairly good size space up here, don't we? Yeah. Okay, another quiz for you. What else, what do we notice right about these berths? Oh, uh, they're not very pointy. Right. Square toes. We like that the best. Nice size hatch. This is the new brand new Loomer hatch with a screen in place and uh, another light up here. It's about that time. And I even have kind of a, a little bit of a pillow here because I know you didn't bring mine. Nope. You know what I like about this? It's kind of a trick question, but that's fabric down there and it's not wet. Yep. So it means there, there are not deck leaks that are coming down to soak things that are stored under there. Yeah, I'm going to just show you how this works out for the captain. And oh yeah, yes, Randall. Now one other thing too, I notice is that they have not bothered with uh, all the the uh, uh, coverings, the ceilings on the side here, like many boats we see, they're ice wooden slats. Yeah. This boat is so affordable. Uh, anybody, I, by the way, I'm going to check. I want to ask you, could you take a look out the aft companionway and see if the line has started for this boat yet? Speaking of afford, I'm going to afford you a siesta. Yeah, I think I think it's time. Would you mind? Thank you, guy. Day. Hey! <laughs> Once again, we find ourselves wrapping up a great day of boat hunting, huh? And we found a really neat uh, English vessel that crossed the Atlantic, proving, proving by the fact that we were on it, that she's a blue water boat, right? Oh, yeah. I, I've used the phrase before, but I think it's apt. This is a journeyman sailboat here. This is not a fancy cocktail boat. It's not a blue blazer boat. It's a hardworking guy sailboat that wants to uh, take off and go around the world. I mean, this is really a blue water boat, uh, right size, and a, a, a couple could be very happy living on this, visiting on the, the visiting all the islands everywhere, and starting their own YouTube channel. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, we proved the boat's float. It's the easiest part of this thing today. We're standing on it, so it's floating. So we're giving it a ten, right? Oh yeah. I'm going right to the heritage, the Camper Nicholson uh, line of, of boat building. I'm giving it another ten right off the bat. She's a twenty. Okay. I would take off and go to the the. Uh, uh, the Virgin Islands with it, and just let that Aries do all the work, okay? And I'm giving another 10 for that. We're up to 30. I'm giving one more 10, Randy. 
This is because it's a boat that an, an average uh, craftsman can come on board and maintain with impunity. All right. Okay. And uh, also, I'm giving it three extra points for a well-organized chart table. All right. So 43. 43. And boy, I gotta get out of the way of this boat because there's gonna be a lineup of people when they see this 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 puppy come up on our episode. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Big bang for the buck. It is a super boat. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed seeing this Nicholson 35. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool, previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm gonna find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>